Hello, ANP students. I'm going to be providing you with an overview of our histology test, um, just as kind of a reminder of, of what you saw on the test. And also I'll be pointing out some uh, characteristics that are clues as to the tissue type's identity. Um, I know the histology test was a pretty challenging test for a lot of you. Um, going forward, just think about, you know, what worked for you in terms of studying, what didn't work for you. Um, the more hands-on experience you can get uh, prior to lab practicals, the better. So we have our uh, first official lab practical coming up in a couple weeks, which will be over selected bones, bone markings, and synovial joints. So I highly recommend using as much class time and open lab time that you can to get a first-hand look of bones. So with that, let's go ahead and review what we all saw on the histology test. Uh, the first microscope station had a nervous tissue slide. This is the actual slide um, that you all looked at. So all of these images, um, I took these photos with my uh, phone camera um, after you all had, had finished taking the test. So these are the actual views of the tissues that you saw. So this is nervous tissue. Uh, nervous tissue is an excitable tissue. And this is how our body sends signals um, for internal communication, uh, sensing external stimuli. The cells that perform that communication function are known as neurons and they are stellate, meaning they are roughly star-shaped. So these cells here with projections, those are gonna be dendrites or axons of the neurons, and then the main part of the cell is known as the soma or the cell body. So that would be a neuron. And then these much smaller um, specks that you see are going to be the glial cells. Those are support cells. So that was number one. Number two was stratified squamous epithelium non-keratinized. Um, these are layered squamous cells. And remember, when you're looking at a stratified epithelial tissue, you're going to want to go by the shape of the cells um, furthest away from the basement membrane. So epithelial tissue is always going to be a lining and covering tissue, and it's typically going to have connective tissue underlying it, because remember that epithelial cells are so closely packed together that there is no infiltration of uh, blood vessels. So the cells that are closest to the connective tissue um, are going to be the first cells uh, getting nutrients and also having waste removal uh, performed by that underlying connective tissue. So this down here is actually the underlying connective tissue. Uh, these would be the uh, epithelial cells that are closest to that connective tissue. The basement membrane would basically be down here. And then the further up you go, the further the cells are away from their nutrient supply. Now, this can be easily confused with stratified squamous epithelium keratinized. Um, if you were to compare this to some of our keratinized slides, uh, you would basically see that the uh, more flattened squamous cells are going to be um, even more differentiated from the underlying cells. There's gonna be kind of a more obvious separation uh, because in the case of our keratinized cells, uh, the further you get away from the basement membrane, um, the more you're going to see those cells that are packed with keratin. And you really won't even see nuclei in those cells at that point. It's going to just be very thin, wispy layering of keratinized cells. So if, if you want to take another look at stratified squamous, non-keratinized versus keratinized, I would be happy to review that with you um, and show you the difference with our uh, slides. Uh, this particular sample came from the tongue.
Number three was skeletal muscle tissue. Uh, this is longitudinal section of skeletal muscle tissue. Now, what you can look for with uh, muscle tissue to tell whether it's skeletal versus cardiac versus smooth, uh, the first thing that I would suggest looking for is the presence of striations. And this sample does have striations. So these fine little lines, these lines that kind of bisect these longitudinal muscle fibers, those are striations. And that's going to tell you that you either have skeletal muscle or cardiac muscle. If this were cardiac muscle, you would have what are known as intercalated discs, which are the junctions between the individual cells within cardiac muscle tissue, and the intercalated discs kind of appear as just interruptions between cells. So they would kind of look like blotchy lines that might not necessarily be obviously all the way across that longitudinal section. Um, and another thing that you can potentially look for, uh, multiple peripheral nuclei in skeletal muscle tissue. And this particular slide didn't really show that very well. Um, but if you, if you get a slide that does show the multiple peripheral nuclei, you'll just see kind of flattened nuclei out to the sides of the skeletal muscle. But because this tissue does not have intercalated discs and it is uh, striated, that, that's going to be your indication that that's skeletal muscle tissue. Now, if this were smooth muscle tissue, you would not have any striations. Okay, number four was simple squamous epithelium. And what you'll see here is a single layer of squamous cells. So what I had um, was showing you guys with this slide, and I believe I had the pointer in the other ocular actually pointing at the tissue itself. But I was showing you the fact that it was just a very thin layer surrounding these alveoli in the lungs. So this is just empty space right here. All of this white, that is just empty space. So there's actually no tissue there at all um, because those are the microscopic air sacs within the lungs. And then surrounding those is going to be your simple uh, squamous epithelium. Now, a lot of students mistook this for adipose tissue. With adipose tissue, even if you're at, um, if you're using the 40x objective lens, the adipocytes are going to be to be much smaller, so there would be far more adipocytes within your field of view, and the boundaries between those adipocytes are not going to show this um, actual really tissue bridges. They will just appear as very thin lines between adipocytes. So you won't actually be able to see nuclei and what looks like substantial tissue. You'll just see adipocytes next to each other, very thin lines, very faint lines. And then the adipocytes themselves instead of being this bright clear that essentially just looks like blank space on the microscope slide, which it is, you'll see more of a yellowish um, tinted color to the inside of those cells. And you'll also often see nuclei at the very edges of the cells because what a fat cell is, it's just a specialized way to store triglycerides. And as a result, the nuclei of the cell actually gets pushed up against the boundary of the cell. So again, if you are still unclear about the difference between simple squamous epithelium and adipose tissue, I'd be more than happy to um, review that with you and we can look at some slides in class. Okay, so dense regular connective tissue. This was number five. What we see here are tightly packed collagen fibers that are running in the same direction. So notice there's very little space between all of these fibers. They're all running parallel to one another. And these are collagenous fibers. 
The nuclei that you see here belong to fibroblasts, which are the cells that produce these collagenous fibers. This particular sample was taken from a rabbit tendon. Number six, we had blood. The color didn't turn out very true to life in this picture, but the blood cells that you see, um, very abundant blood cells are the erythrocytes or the red blood cells. And uh, they're, they're typically going to appear pinkish red in color and they won't have an obvious nuclei. Red blood cells do not have nuclei. And then the purple stain nuclei that you see in just a few locations, those are the nuclei of white blood cells or leukocytes. Number seven was cardiac muscle tissue. So again, what you're gonna look for is striations. And this picture didn't turn out quite as well as the skeletal muscle. Um, but there were stria striations or striations apparent in this tissue, and those are just going to be those very faint little lines. And then the other thing that you'll see with the cardiac muscle tissue are those intercalated discs. So I'm going to circle one here, that line. That is an intercalated disc. I don't know what's up with my pen here. Um, again, these would be intercalated discs. They're kind of gonna look like more obvious striations, and it, it is not necessarily clear that they're spanning the whole width of those fibers. But if you see striations, and you see those kind of blotchy lines, that's gonna be your indication that, that you're looking at cardiac muscle tissue. And again, that's only going to be found in the muscle of the heart. Number eight was areolar connective tissue or areolar connective tissue. Um, these very fine fibers are the elastic fibers and they'll kind of be kind of uh, chaotically arranged rather randomly. And then the thicker fibers that you see are going to be collagen fibers. Um, the cells, if you see cells, they're going to be fibroblasts. Number nine was simple columnar epithelium. So I had the pointer on this line of cells here. So these cells are taller than they are wide, so they're quite tall. And each of these dark purple blotches is a single nucleus. So you can see that the nuclei are in the basal portion, so they would be close to the basement membrane. And they're pretty much gonna be lined up with one another. It's, it's really apparent here that you don't have layering of the cells. So a single, uh, single layer of those tall um, epithelial cells that's going to be your indication that you're looking at simple columnar epithelial tissue. Okay, number 10 was fibrocartilage. Um, the fibers that you see in this are collagen fibers and the cells are going to be chondrocytes. Um, the cell type is going to be common to all types of cartilage. They kind of have these irregular um, shapes to them. Um, and sometimes the cartilage, they really kind of look like little coffee beans, I think. And the hint that was associated with this microscope station was that this is the type of cartilage that is found in the intervertebral discs. Um, with this particular specimen, I didn't really feel like it um, was a, a close match to what you were seeing in your textbook. So I gave that hint that uh, this type of cartilage is found in intervertebral discs. So if you knew the locations in the body of fibrocartilage, um, you would have an indication of what you were looking at aside from just the physical characteristics of the tissue. Okay, so that wraps up my overview of the histology test. Please let me know 
if you have any questions. And thank you for listening.